<laughs> I mean, more or less. Like I, not that like. Oh, hi. I love, it. but I think they're important for because. Not every team in every sport is going to win. We know that. We're aware of that. But the the crime you cannot commit, and the Pistons had been in the act of committing it for several years, uh, was losing and being boring, or losing and not being compelling, or losing and not having an attraction. And I'm not saying you don't go get a star and just say, hey, that's it. Here's our star. No other plan. We don't care. Well, no, but – until you figure out how you're going to win, and Stan Van Gundy is still struggling to figure that out, uh, having a star, and I'm not calling him a superstar, but having a star pretty much in his prime is a damn good start, or, or at least a, I won't call it a distraction uh, but because that's going too far, but you do have to have something to – Build around. I still don't know exactly what the plan is per no, se, no. but there is some things to start with. But Wojo, you used to always scold me for getting all caught up in oh, flashy names, flashy players, and that's exactly what Blake Griffin is. Well, yeah, flashy names, flashy players. If they're thirty-five years old and no longer effective, um, like you know, I, I don't know if you guys have had, but me and the little bogey kid in the evening, we got all these texts about. This is dumb. This is just like when the Pistons got Allen Iverson. No, it's not. No, that that was done for a good reason, actually, too. That was to get the salary dump right. in the last year, and he was had nothing left per se. He was wasn't he thirty three or thirty four or whatever. Um, so it's not like that. And and believe me, I'm not I'm not caught up in the awe of the. I just think it's um, it's important to have somebody to get you through. Play. Like last night, I was at the Palace for the um, The Pistons played the Cavaliers, and the Pistons with a stunning victory, okay? Just snap the eight-game losing streak. But early on, you know, eight-game losing streak, a uh, ragtag lineup because Griffin wasn't in yet, and all the crowd was doing was ooing an eye at everything LeBron did. LeBron, you know, sizes up a three and nails it and dunks. And I know LeBron is special, but tell me the last kiss that made you ooh and ah. And, 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 and I feel guilty saying this, but I'm going to say it. Tobias Harris and Avery Bradley were really nice guys and nice players and did decent things in their short time here. Did they ever make a single play that you went, ooh, ooh, ooh? No, the last player that really did that was Grant Hill probably. <laughs> And maybe occasionally Drummond. Uh, you yeah, know, when, I mean, when Drummond and Reggie are kind of working the two-man game, they can do some good stuff for sure. But now, but now I can hear the the back. Like, oh, well, you just wants oohs and ahs. He doesn't want wins. Well, no, of course you want wins. But I think it was pretty clear. And, and when I spoke with Van Gundy last week, I thought he made it pretty clear that there had to be something else. That uh, he didn't say it wasn't working as is, but. We knew it wasn't working as is. Avery Bradley was probably going to leave, or they certainly weren't going to pay him that much. He was a bit of a disappointment here. And so in the absence of a bunch of good players rising together, uh, you rise the level with one guy and, and see what follows and who follows. And who knows, maybe young guys like Stanley Johnson and Luke Card can rise with him. Yeah, I, I just, here's my thing, and, and you did sit down with Stan last Friday in a stroke of either good luck or bad luck because the trade came out, obviously, <laughs> on Monday night. We had a long Q&A with him. Um, it, it just does reek of a guy who is, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm at wit's end here. It's not working, so let's just, let's try a Hail Mary. And, you know, next next year's GM and next year's head coach might not be named Stan Van Gundy, and then what's he left with? That's the part of it that I'm not thrilled about, but I guess there's a defensible part of that as well. Well, yeah. Um, when people ask me, um, what, you, what do you think of the trade, the Blake Griffith trade? What do you think? What's your first impression? And this is what I've been saying. Um, what's the blank? I mean, yeah, what's the blank? Yeah, and I know. Said, well, that's, that's not a strategy. That's not a plan. I said, well, technically, no. But I, I do think there is. You guys are the great arbiters. Tell me if I'm allowed to think this. This is what I think. 
Can I like the move? Can I like the player, Blake Griffin? Can I like the possibilities, but still not yet believe in the direction? Yeah. Yes, and you can actually hate the trade even if you like the player. I mean, because they're, they're going to be – Okay, that's true too. Because they're yeah. going to have, what, 78 of their $108 million salary cap tied up with three players next year, and it even gets worse uh, the last year of Reggie's contract? Well, well, right, and you know what's also weird is that – and again, which is why it's, it's hard to embrace the direction, but at least it's a more interesting direction. But the Pistons are also bucking the trend – the NBA is a backcourt league, I know. a shooting league, and, and, and they're loading up on these front-line guys. Right. And, and, Van, and Van Gundy has talked about like almost like a little bit of a money ball aspect to it. Like If you can't get all the coveted pieces, maybe because you're not the, a destination place, well, maybe you go and get other pieces that there isn't as much competition for and try to build a team a different way. Do you buy that? Like. They are front court heavy. They can't go and get a superstar guard. It doesn't appear, although I would have loved Kemba Walker. So maybe forced to build a team a different way. I, I'm not totally buying that, but I can still see it. Well, if you could have drafted, you know, either Booker or Donovan Mitchell, oh, you wouldn't have yeah. those, 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 those oh, problems. Yeah. Uh, the Stony you're app. Right, Stoney. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, do we have, I have or a Kalimba Edwards? <laughs> I have a hypothetical question for you. We were discussing. Of course. Yes. Uh, after Super Bowl Fifty Two. If uh, the New England Patriots do what's expected and beat the Philadelphia Eagles, what if, it's hypothetical, Bill oh, Belichick boy. pulls a Scotty Bowman and says, I'm done, uh, and uh, he recommends Matt Patricia to take over? If that does occur, it's just hypothetical, who do you want to coach the Lions? Dave Lewis. <laughs> um, first of all, Sony, who are you rooting for in the Super Bowl between the New England Patriots and the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles? I'm rooting for the Eagles. Fly, I do. I, I, Eagles, Eagles fly. fly. Come on and fly to fight for victory. Um, Watch but, my oh. gate. But I, I, I kind of hope Brady has a good game because I like Tom Brady. Yeah. Um, got it. Who is, now, first of all, you guys are being mean with this hypothetical to Lions fans. Leave them alone. They have their guy. Well, that was actually a Lions, fan, a Lions fan actually texted it into us, so it's Lions fan on fan crime then, I think. Right. Well, Jamie, uh, we would have to reopen the SOL Hall of Fame, would we not? Oh, yeah. oh are you kidding me? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think we, we, we would. The, the Jamie Matt, said that, actually. The Matt Patricia Wing. We'd have to name one of the wings the Matt Patricia Wing, I think. I mean, what would the, would the Patriots, A, do that? And I guess that. It's literally mm. Belichick decided to retire right after. And, I mean, I assume by the rules, the Lions wouldn't have anything inked with Patricia. So I guess they could do that. Who would the Lions go and get? Here, um, here are my three <laughs> options. Tell me which one's most realistic. Jim Bob Cooter, okay. elevate him to head coach. Uh, Jimmy okay. Schwartz, he'd be available <laughs> after the Super Bowl's over. Or oh, just right. go right down the road and bring in Harbaugh. <laughs> sure. Or what? Uh, Rod Marinelli has had a good year, a good uh, yep. uh, one with the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Why not go Listen, get him it, back? It's happened before. I mean, it happened in other you know, team sports where a coach is a coach for a team, and like Mike Riley was the coach at Oregon State, came back Billy to Oregon Martin. State. Billy Martin multiple times, right? <laughs> John Gibbons. Yeah. yeah, why not? Now, first of all, and all kidding aside, I know there's been that narrative that things have fallen apart, and this would be the time for Belichick to walk away, but. There is absolutely no even murmuring of him ready to retire, right? No, it just looks, you know, both coordinators leaving. He looks like he's happy for the first time in his life. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Although, as Jamie pointed out, I was listening earlier on the Jamie and Stoney show. Yeah. He's lost his coordinators at the same time before, That's correct? That's true. Right? Yeah. And they seem to be okay With after that. Charlie Weiss and Romeo Cornell. You know what? Honestly, in, in that, the Lions probably would be stuck to the point that they would just elevate Jim Bob Gooder. Yeah, probably. Don't you think? Yeah. Hey, uh, la mean, last thing, and then we got to let you go. Do you know who Kendall Jenner's mother is? It's a Kardashian of some sort, correct? But uh, her name's Chris Jenner. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. she married. But, but I, it, she married. I, I don't believe that's well. win. That's not a win. I think but I win that bet. But he knew it was a Kardashian. It's that's, a win. That's fine. I knew that too. I would have said that. No, because you yeah. said when I brought up Kim, you said they're sisters. Yeah, you didn't so even you know, didn't you know, didn't know that know Kim, Kim and... was sisters with her. I, I'm proud not to know that. Anyway. Hey, Jamie, I, I am very weak on my Kardashian trivia. I know 
just the basics. I, I am too, clearly. Yeah, I've so. got a pledge to keep it that way. 